I want to talk to you about something that I've been thinking about for quite a while, and I've talked to a few of you about it. And it's something we all have, and it's something we all have to deal with throughout our lives. And it's part of what makes us human, and a part of what makes us who we are. And it's an attribute that God and Jesus Christ both have and they gave us. And yet at times we really struggle with it. And no matter how fast we run through life or how slowly we plod through life, it always goes with us. It's always there. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about our emotions, our feelings. Sometimes we really struggle with our feelings and our emotions, don't we? It's difficult at times. And when we look at Jesus Christ and all that he went through, you realize they know our feelings actually better than we do. So I want to give you a few ideas and thoughts on how to deal with emotions. I've had my, my experiences with emotionals up and down. The emotions of joy are fairly easy to deal with, aren't they? It's the emotions of hurt and pain and loss and grief and different kinds of suffering that's really difficult. I had a very traumatic time in my life when I was younger, in my 20s, early 20s. I thought I had everything on course, everything headed straight ahead. I got one phone call, one phone call, and I crashed. I didn't know how to deal with it. I wasn't in God's church yet. And I didn't realize God was calling me or working with me. And I was devastated. I was really devastated. And I didn't know how or what to do. I know I called out to God, and I know I cried and just said, God, you know, what's going on here? And typical human response, it was like, why me? Why me? And at that time, I didn't understand why me. So one of the first things we have to do is take these issues to God. God and Jesus Christ know exactly what we're going through. They know us better than we know ourselves. And they allow us to go through various things, as Mr. Denny Luker used to say. A lot of times it's a test, just to see how we react, how we handle it. So what I did when I had this great upheaval in my life, I stuffed it. I didn't know what else to do with it. I didn't have anybody to talk to, so I stuffed it. I kept it inside, and it just roiled inside me and churned. And it would come out at the wrong times. Some little thing would set me off, and I'd tend to blow up at somebody over the smallest thing. And they'd go like, whoa, Bob, what's, what's going on with you? And I'd say, no, oh, I'm sorry, just uh, having, a, having a tough time, bad day. Well, it was more than that. It was all this churning inside me. But after a number of experiences with emotional issues, I've learned that the first thing you have to do is get on your knees and talk to God. Pour out your heart to God. Just like Jesus Christ did before he was taken in the garden, Gethsemane. He poured out his heart to God. Like King Hezekiah in Judah as the Assyrians surrounded Jerusalem and were demanding the surrender of Jerusalem, what did Hezekiah do? He went to the temple with the very sheet of paper that the Assyrians gave him demanding that they surrender. And he prayed over that fervently to God. And God did honor that prayer, and the Assyrians were virtually annihilated overnight and were gone. I'm not saying that's going to happen to your emotional issues or problems. My emotional issues that I've had, they haven't gone overnight. It's like a wound, a very deep, severe wound. 
It heals over time, the pain lessens. But what's left? There's a scar, right? I have a scar right here on my lip when I fell off a banister when I was a little kid. I still remember that. And I hit a rock, and the rock cut my lip. But I don't dwell on it anymore. I just remember it once in a great while. I thought, well, yeah, that kind of hurt. So taking it to God is a, one of the first things, in fact, the first thing you really have to do. As these emotions wash over you and you're struggling with it, talk to God. And after that, I would seek out someone you really trust to talk to. Sometimes it's very, very helpful to vent. And for those of you that are trusted and people want to be able to talk to you about an issue, I hope you're a good listener. Because a lot of times, all they want you to do is listen. They don't want answers. They don't want your theories on why things happened. A lot of times they just need to talk. Talk is very good. Talk to God. Talk to a trusted individual or the ministry or even seek out professional help if you have to. They're there for you. Another thing you've got to realize is time. It takes time for these things to heal. It takes time for the pain to pass, and for you to be able to think more logically and to be able to deal with the situation better. So during that time, if you can, try not to make major life-changing decisions unless it's necessary. Because I know you can make wrong decisions when you're emotionally upset, and things can turn out even worse, possibly. You can say the wrong things to the wrong people, or who knows. So give it time. And what else is very important is forgiveness. If you've been wronged by somebody, forgiveness is paramount. There's a lot in the Bible about forgiveness. I don't have time in the sermonette to, to be going to various scriptures on it, but Forgiveness is healing, not only for you, but it's actually beneficial to God and Jesus Christ, too. Because they know you've got the right spirit and you're dealing with it the right way. And it frees you up. When you forgive somebody, it frees you up. It helps you get along with your life. It helps you to move along. Now, you notice I didn't say forget. Forgive and forget. Forget is very difficult for us humans, isn't it? We never really forget sometimes what's happened to us. But forgiving is paramount. And you look at the Middle East and everything that's happening over there, those people can't forgive or forget. They've been at each other's throat for thousands of years. So forgiveness, really big, really big. So, brethren, I think I've tried to convey to you some of the things I've learned. I'm not a psychologist or a psychiatrist. I've never studied any of this. It's just what I've kind of gleaned through life. And I want to close with a scripture here that I think is very telling and very revealing about God and who and what he is. And this is Moses talking to the people of Israel before they went into the promised land. And it was very apropos for them, and it's even more apropos for us. Because when we look at God and Jesus Christ, they're there for us. 24-7, as the saying goes. So Deuteronomy 31, verse 8. It's one of my favorite scriptures. Deuteronomy 31, verse 8. And the Lord, He is the one who goes before you, he will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear nor be dismayed. Brethren, I think that's so apropos when we're having emotional issues. 
Do not fear nor be dismayed. Be God truly and Jesus Christ are there for us. They'll stand with us. They'll stand by us. Be strengthened by God and his Holy Spirit. And you'll be able to deal more effectively with your emotional issues and have emotional maturity.